Humans don't have the best senses in the animal kingdom. Despite this, we are adapted to responding in certain ways to certain stimuli. There are no particularly scary smells, besides death and decay, but sounds are a whole nother world. You know the feeling when a certain sound crackles goosebumps down your spine, raises your hair on the back of your neck? Creepy, no? We are all aware that nature generates a wide range of fascinating sights and sounds. There are a variety of noises to be aware of when outdoors, ranging from spooky creatures to unexplained sounds that go bump in the night. So, check beneath your bed, put on all the lights, and join me as I go over 10 of some of the creepiest sounds found in nature. Number 10. The American alligator, Alligator mississippiensis, is one of two surviving members of a very old lineage of crocodilians, the Alligatorinae. The only known living species are the American alligator, but also the Chinese alligator, Alligator sinensis. Their group split away from the Caymans during the latest Cretaceous, making both of these groups quite old. They used to enjoy a much larger range across the Americas, Europe, and Asia. Crocodilians are some of, if not the, loudest and noisiest brats among the living groups of reptiles, discounting birds, of course. Crocodilians make a variety of sounds, from hisses to chirps to grumbles and roars. They are used in different ways to convey different meanings to members of the same species, as well as enemies and prey. Alligators and other crocodilians share many signal elements, although they may be combined in different ways in order to serve different communication functions. The alligator's signaling system also shows complexity similar to that reported in birds and mammals, demonstrating that some reptiles are not behaviorally uncomplicated, in spite of their general inferior capacity for sustained metabolic activity. Since the early explorers and conquerors began raping, pillaging, and bastardizing the Americas and seriously researching its original wildlife, the booming cry of alligators has been mythologized and misinterpreted. Only in the last 30 years or more have reliable descriptions of this key prominent vocalization been documented. Many questions have been raised, but only a few have been addressed. There is now ample evidence that both sexes bellow. Bellowing happens mostly in the water, although it can also occur on land. Males employ bellowing extensively during the mating season when they thrust their heads and tails up out of the water and roar, causing water to dance up from their backs as they shake the water. These huge beasts will also produce deep grunts in response to the distress calls of young gators. They make low growls as part of physical displays in which they slap each other's heads, yawn, or put on an inflated posture. They also produce a coughing or chuffing sound, mostly during courtship. Like the rest of the crocodilians, gators hiss and hiss towards just about yeah. anything. It's their main vocalization. You can never fully tell what a gator is going to decide what to do, so if you hear their calls or their hisses wow. at any time, you should make sure to get the hell out of Dodge to be safe. Gators are some of the least dangerous of the large crocodilians, with an average of 6 to 15 unprovoked bites or attacks a year with no fatal attacks. That being said, I wouldn't chance it because they have the jaw power to rip body parts and crush bone. So like, they're chill, but don't mess with them either. Number 9 Two lynx face off on the side of a road in Ontario. Says one. Says the other. They say in unison, tapping their foreheads together before suddenly darting apart. The lynx, the various species of medium-sized cat within the lynx genus, are very noisy cats. On top of being noisy, 
they make some of the most frightening sounds among cats of their size, and even compared to the groaning of the lion. Spread across North America and Eurasia, the many lynx species make an assortment of different sounds that correspond to different meanings. Their acoustic repertoire includes about 10 to 12 signal types, a repertoire size corresponding to that of other felids and species in other families of the terrestrial carnivorans, such as gurgles, purrs, wawas, spits, hisses, growls, yowls, snorts, chatters, mews, and screams. Lynxes let out a long, moaning wail to attract mates. Since lynxes are relatively rare, it makes sense that this mating call is so loud. While most of the signal types are used in close-range communication, the mew is a long-distance call. In his 1987 publication on lynx vocalizations, Gustav Peters argued that this type of vocalization occurs in various behavioral contexts, but that main calling activity is during the mating season, when it is used by males and females and serves to bring the partners together for mating. Such function can also be concluded on the basis of observations from the wild. Although very scant amount of data exists, it seems that such calling can be important for the partners to meet during the short estrus period of females, which lasts for about three days. Lynxes have several other sounds that they can make as well. They have a short, lower sound that almost sounds like a bark to help their kittens. Lynxes use a third kind of sound when they're confronting another adult. At night, Without seeing the source of the calls, not knowing what a lynx is, looks like, or the sounds they make, would easily be the kernel for all sorts of tall tales of wild monsters and wailing ghosts. Number 8 Halloween is swiftly approaching, meaning you'll likely soon hear creepy soundtracks replete with screams, clanking chains, jack-o'-lanterns, haunted houses, creepy floorboards, gloomy forests, dead trees, and howling winds blaring from haunted houses and home displays. These are all images that spring to mind when thinking of a frightful Halloween night. While the sound of human suffering is frightful for obvious reasons, what is it? exactly about a brisk fall gust that sends shivers up our spines. Besides the cold, obviously. It is just wind, right? Well, in the movies it's never just the wind, but the wind surely can create some eerie and creepy sounds. Scary wind sounds occur for a variety of reasons, but there is a scientific explanation why the roaring breeze sends shivers down our spines when wind is broken up by traveling through or around obstacles, such as trees, it howls. The gust of air will split off to go around the tree before rejoining on the opposite side. When the currents reconnect, one side of the wind will be stronger than the other due to factors such as the surface of the tree and air speed. The interaction of the two currents induces vibrations in the air, which produces the creepy howling sounds. Consider whistling. When you hold your lips right and blow air through that form, you can whistle. Natural occurrences of the same form are possible. The wind produces a wide range of noises in nature. It might be described as a howl, a whistle, or a growl. Even while we know why the wind makes these sounds, it doesn't make them any less eerie. If there are leaves on the trees, they absorb some of the vibrations. That's why you never hear the wind howling in the middle of summer, only around Halloween when the leaves are falling off the trees, or in the dead of winter. So, the reason everyone finds howling wind so creepy is because it's associated with the Halloween season when the trees start to become bare, or with the dark, vast, naked forest in winter, corresponding with the cycles of birth, death, and rebirth we haphazardly apply to nature in a poetic, not entirely unscientific, but prosaic manner. Number 7 The ruffed grouse, or Bonasa umbelas, is a musical bird with a talent for percussion. There are a ton of species and genera of grouse, which are the tribe Tetraonini. Technically, turkeys are grouse, as well as other round kooky dinos like the spruce grouse, the blue grouse, and the balsack-breasted sage grouse. 
the ruffed grouse differs from the rest in its percussive courtship display. Male ruffed grouse are aggressively territorial throughout their adult lives, defending for their almost exclusive use of a piece of woodland that is 6 to 10 acres in extent. Usually this is shared with one or two hens. The ruffed grouse relies entirely on a non-vocal acoustic display, known as drumming. The drumming itself is a rapid, wing-beating display, creating a low-frequency sound, starting slow and speeding up. Even in thick woods, this can be heard for 0.25 miles, 0.4 kilometers, or more. The male grouse proclaims his property by engaging in a drumming display. This sound is made by beating his wings against the air to create a vacuum, as lightning does when it makes thunder. The drummer usually stands on a log, stone, or mound of dirt when drumming, and this object is called a drumming log. He does not strike the log to make the noise, he only uses the drumming log as a stage for his display. The drumming stage, selected by a male, is most likely to be about 10 to 12 inches above the ground, in moderately dense brush, usually 70 to 160 stems within a 10-foot radius, where he can maintain unrestricted surveillance over the terrain for a radius of about 60 feet. Across much of the ruffed grouse range, there are usually mature male aspens within sight in the forest canopy overhead. Drumming occurs throughout the year so long as his log is not too deeply buried under snow. In the spring, drumming becomes more frequent and prolonged as the cock grouse advertises his location to hens seeking a mate. Hopefully, you don't have any ruffed grouses as upstairs neighbors. While this noise may be less scary than some of the others on this list, it's certainly eerie. Number 6 The stupid list that gave me the idea for this video decided crows belonged here at number 6, who am I to argue? The thing is that they just said crows, like which one? Well, credit to the original list writer, all crows vocalize and all have the ability to creep us out. Just so we're clear, crow is the common name for the entire genus Corvus, which contains 42 species ranging across every single continent besides Antarctica. They are some of, if not the, smartest birds alive today and are as adaptable as we are. Though considering they are naturally able to fly, perhaps they are even more adaptable. Depends on your definition. I am going to assume by crow, the list writer meant the American crow, Corvus brachyrhynchos, or perhaps the raven, Corvus corax, which is a large species of crow, despite the name. Crows are a regular fixture in horror movies. They represent death in many cultures. As well as being iconic for their appearances in horror movies, crows are known to be extremely intelligent. They have even proven capable of using tools to some degree. Crows have over 20 calls, the most popular, a harsh call, has a variety of characteristics and lengths that may be used for a variety of purposes. Immature, pleading young American crows make a higher-pitched nasal cry that sounds similar to that of a fish crow. You may also hear various cries and alarm calls used to rouse other to mob predators. When you're alone in the dark or walking through the brown dead woods, the crow's cries are frequently the only thing you can hear, especially in the fall and winter. There's no disputing that a crow's caw is unsettling in this setting. Crows may make a broad range of noises, but their signature caw marks the beginning of innumerable horror stories. A crow's caw can be much creepier in person than it appears on video. If you start hearing crows too frequently, want to consider purchasing a scarecrow to give the birds a taste of their own medicine. Though I personally find their imitations of human voices to be far creepier than their natural caws, they sound like a computer-generated voice box or some other kind of sound that belongs in an auditory uncanny valley. Are you happy to be up? I know, right? Number 5 The next item on the list is one that falls into the realm of cryptozoology, or more probably the paranormal, though more simply put, the unexplained. Though unexplained, it undoubtedly does seem to occur in nature, though even here that definition is being stretched. 
Online videos featuring strange sounds emanating from the heavens were attracting a lot of attention in the early 2010s. They seemed to just emanate from nowhere besides the sky. These mysterious trumpet noises have been heard worldwide. The sounds have been reported over the last several years from California to Texas to Australia and many parts in between. The website strangesounds.org, which chronicles the incidents, has compiled a list of more than 150 videos of the audible weirdness. Some occurred on several occasions in Canada in 2012. There was another report and recording of the sounds from Germany in 2015. In it, the puzzled photographer sticks a camera out the window as a woman asks in German, what is that? In the background is heard a metallic type groaning sound coming from the oh. sky. As if someone just put the key in the ignition of a large invisible close encounters of the third kind kind of vehicle and started it up. The video is all the more eerie because a young boy is standing motionless in the street as the noise amplifies. It's undoubtedly eerie and creepy, made even more so because there isn't a definite explanation. The rumor debunking website Snopes says that scientists point to natural causes such as earthquakes, tidal waves, methane explosions, and even shifting sand dunes as the possible reasons for the oral oddities. David Hill, a US Geological Survey scientist, said that small earthquakes below the surface can transmit sounds of the Earth's cracking crust. He also said that the emissions could come from meteors. Other hypotheses include electrical power lines, electromagnetic radiation, high-pressure gas lines, wireless communications devices, submarines, and, saving the best for last, the reverberating mating call of a male midshipman fish. That being said, an audio engineer says they're easy to fake. Richard Dolmat of the Digital Sound Magic Recording Studios in Vancouver applied his professional ear to several popular strange sounds videos that were then recently broadcast on CTV's Canada AM. For his analysis, Dolmat says he started by looking for obvious signs the soundtracks didn't match the videos. The sounds of birds chirping in the nighttime video of the Pas Man, for example, raised his suspicion. I know that in Canadian winters, you don't get that many birds active in the snow in the middle of the night, he said, but that wasn't the most striking clue. Comparing the past video to one depicting strange sounds over Conklin, Alta, Dolmat said they both feature the exact same birds with the exact same rhythm pattern timing. Lining the videos up for a back-to-back -back digital comparison, he found that they are exactly the same sound. Comparing his professionally tuned ear to the palate of a chef who can tell you what goes into a dish just by tasting it, Dalmat said he was able to determine the components of the ominous soundtrack. I broke the original YouTube video sounds down to an alligator roar, two lion roars, some white noise, a stone dragging on concrete, and three water phones, he said. They've all been pitched down with a ton of reverb and compressed, and that's what you get, explaining that that's an audio engineer's favorite method of coming up with very scary sounds. Fade in, fade out, and you're done. Dolmat's explanation could indeed account for the host of videos that have sprouted up online, the most popular of which is a 12-minute video featuring strange sounds supposedly heard in Kiev, Ukraine. That video has had more than 2 million views since it was posted on YouTube in August of 2011. Even if these videos are what Dolmat believes are a textbook viral marketing ploy, his debunking does nothing to explain the mystery sound phenomenon for those who have heard them firsthand. Some of the creepiest things are those we can't explain. Though as a scientist and science communicator, I cannot just sit and allow people to fill in the gaps in knowledge with the supernatural or just simply leave it at a paranormal explanation. An explanation exists out there and all it needs is to be quantified. Those offered up by the many experts are all likely culprits and ones which can be theoretically tested to support a given hypothesis or not. Whatever the exact reason or reasons for the mysterious sound, it still easily sends a chill up one's spine. Number 4 
owls are commonly associated with intelligence, large eyes, and nocturnal nature. You have to admit though, those quiet, big-eyed birds are a little creepy too. Owls also produce various sounds, most of them pretty eerie and unsettling when out in nature. The sound that most people think of when they think of an owl is a gentle hoot. Typically, this sound is associated with the great horned owl, Bubo virginianus. However, there is an entire order of owls, the Strigiformes, that contains over 200 species. That many species of bird all make different sounds, including screeches that are very disarming. Young owls are very noisy and scream piercingly when begging for food. Adult owls can make all sorts of noises like barks, shrieks, hisses, coos, cries, and screams. Any one of those sounds at the wrong time could give you a case of the wheelies. Barn owls, Tito alba, are some of the most common owls and most common owls to make some of the most frightening sounds. Barn owls don't hoot the way most owls do. Instead, they make a long, harsh scream that lasts about two seconds. It's made mostly by the male, who often calls repeatedly from the air. Females give the call infrequently. A softer, more wavering version of this is termed a purring call. Males use it to invite a female to inspect a nest site, and females use it to beg for food from the male. Barn owls also make a loud 3-4 second hiss at intruders or predators that disturb the nest. Mom also calls to the babies with a chittering sound to let them know it is time to eat. One owl even seems to have inspired local mythology of the devil bird, or ulama, a terrible bird supposed to utter blood-curdling human-sounding shrieks in jungles at night. This mythical Sri Lankan cryptid or beast is most likely the spot-bellied eagle owl. Bulbo Nepalensis. The owl is known for its unusual human-like cry. Maha Bakamuna is a local name. According to Cryptozoology.com, it was confirmed in July of 2001 that the Ulama description exactly matched the spot-bellied eagle owl. This cry is a scream that peaks and then lowers in tone. The species' territorial cry, like that of most other eagle owls, consists of low hoots separated by two seconds. The voice is powerful, deep, and carries a long distance. Because vision in forest-dwelling owls and many other types of birds is more limited than in open or semi-open settings, they often have a wide and complicated spectrum of vocalizations. However, even for a member of the genus Bubo, the spot-bellied eagle owl has very tiny ear openings, indicating that some territorial activity is carried out visually rather than auditorily. Hearing it in a dark forest while trying to find my way home would certainly make an impression. Maybe the sounds of an owl wouldn't be so creepy if they were active during the day. A quiet night in the woods interjected with a hoot from an owl may be all it takes to send one running for cover. Number 3 As we get closer to the final contender for horrible sounds to hear in nature when all alone in the dark and without weapons, that seems like too long a title for YouTube now that they think about it, we will now come to the next Halloween or fall linked animal that carries more myth about it than fact. Like, there's nothing particularly scary about bats, just as there isn't anything particularly scary about owls or crows, yet they remain a staple of decorations and backgrounds for the entire autumn season. Bats are extremely weird animals that should surprise no one as they are the only mammals adapted to literally fly, and we should all be well aware that adapting to flight messes up the tetrapod skeleton and organs to a level seen in no other groups besides the misshapen marine monsters of the Mariana. There are 1400 species of bats ranging from the size of mice to wingspans as wide as some people are tall, not me though. Some are butt-ugly little battle beasts with giant nose flaps, ears bigger than their skulls, or square-shaped snoots that get them mistaken for Jersey Devils. Others are some of the cutest things to ever live, with dog or lemur-shaped heads, bulging hamster-like eyes, and a taste for pretty much just fruit. The horrible squeaking of bats you hear in movies is probably not realistic to the real sounds bats make. Since many bats have average to middling eyesight, they use echolocation and their enormous ear and facial flaps and discs to get around by seeing with sound. 
The bats are informally and traditionally divided into two groups, microbats and megabats. These groups, as their Greek Latin prefix suggests, were incorrectly dividing bats by size. Turns out that some microbats and some megabats belong to groups of bats that contain other micro or megabats, so their evolutionary history and connections are more complicated. We can still use those names informally though, as it now simply refers to size and lifestyle types rather than relationships. Microbats and a few megabats emit ultrasonic sounds to produce echoes. Sound intensity of these echoes are dependent on subglottic pressure. Subglottic pressure is the pressure that builds up beneath the vocal folds. The amount of subglottic pressure generated is determined by the airflow through the leakage of air between the vocal folds and the resistance to that flow. The bat's cricothyroid muscle controls the orientation pulse frequency, which is an important function. This muscle is located inside the larynx, and it is the only tensor muscle capable of aiding phonation. They scream at their prey and their surroundings, and they receive that sound back at whatever speed it comes back at after hitting whatever it hits. By comparing the outgoing pulse with the returning echoes, bats can gather information on their surroundings. This allows them to detect prey in complete and total darkness. Some bat calls can reach 140 decibels. Microbats use their larynx to emit echolocation signals through the mouth or the nose. Microbat calls range in frequency from 14,000 to well over 100,000 hertz, extending well beyond the range of human hearing, which is between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Various groups of bats have evolved fleshy extensions around and above the nostrils, known as nose leaves, which play a role in sound transmission. All bats make a whole bunch of sounds. Like every other animal on this list, some of those sounds are terrifying without their proper context. Some of their screams are too high-pitched for us to hear, but plenty fall within our auditory spectrum. Bats are among the most vocal of mammals and produce calls to attract mates, find roost partners, and defend resources. These calls are typically low frequency and can travel long distances. Mexican free-tailed bats, Tatarida brasiliensis, for example, are one of the few species to sing like birds. Males sing to attract females. Songs have three phases, chirps, trills, and buzzes, the former having A and B syllables. Bat songs are highly stereotypical, but with variation in syllable number, phrase order, and phrase repetitions between individuals. Among greater spear-nosed bats, Phylostomus hastatus, females produce loud broadband calls among their roost mates to form group cohesion. Calls differ between roosting groups and may arise from vocal learning. In a study on captive Egyptian fruit bats, Rusatus aegyptiacus, 70% of the directed calls could be identified by the researchers as to which individual bat made it, and 60% could be categorized into four contexts, squabbling over food, jostling over position in their sleeping cluster, protesting over mating attempts, and arguing when perched in close proximity to each other. The animals made slightly different sounds when communicating with different individual bats, especially those of the opposite sex. In the highly sexually dimorphic hammer-headed bat, Hypsignathus monstrosus, males produce deep, resonating, monotonous calls to attract females. Bats in flight make vocal signals for traffic control. Greater bulldog bats, Noctilio leporinus, honk when on a collision course with each other. While this is a cool and interesting ability for a bat, it's downright creepy. The sounds of a bat are so high-pitched that you can hear them easily over long distances. On a quiet night, it's possible to listen to the bat's wings flapping as well. Thanks to horror movies and scary stories, most of us already have a healthy fear and distaste of bats, unless you realize they literally want nothing to do with you and cannot harm you outside of rabies. Number 2 Most of us are familiar with the sound that a bear makes. However, this doesn't prepare you for hearing that sound in the wild. Hearing that growl should make just about anyone shit bricks, if they have literally any self-preservation instincts anyways. 
bears obviously come in many shapes and sizes. The bigger the bear, the louder the roars. Black bears are some of the chillest of the bears, so if you are hearing it roar at you, probably means you deserve it. Apprehensive expressions are forceful expulsions of air, accompanied by threatening body language and sometimes deeper throaty sounds. This explosive behavior looks and sounds very threatening, but is harmful bluster from nervous bears, often mothers with cubs. Bears produce a number of vocal and non-vocal sounds. Tongue clicking, grunting, or chuffing may be made in cordial situations such as between mothers and cubs or courting couples while moaning, huffing, snorting, or blowing air is made when an individual is stressed. Barking is produced during times of alarm, excitement, or to give away the animal's position. Warning sounds include jaw clicking and lip popping, while teeth chatters, bellows, growls, roars, and pulsing sounds are made in aggressive encounters. Cubs may squeal, bawl, bleat, or scream when in distress and make motor-like humming when comfortable or nursing. You have heard the cries of baby bears in just about anything with dinosaurs or monsters in it as it is a common stock sound effect often used without alteration. Lazy, unless you have zero sound design budget, of course. All bears have similar sounds towards one another. The sloth bear, Melursus ursinus, makes some of the weirdest when fighting. Unlike the roars of black and brown bears, the sloth bear utters series of unsettling loud barks and grunts that seem to have an element of roar to them as well. Their sounds also come off as more unsettling, at least in my opinion, due to their small size and seemingly chill nature. These guys are found throughout the Indian subcontinent and currently have to contend with tigers, elephants, and rhinos. They also used to have to deal with dirk-toothed big cats like Megantarion as well as other bear species during the Pleistocene. This environmental pressure from bigger, nastier animals combined with its long, sharp claws adapted for tearing and digging and their enormous canine teeth which are large for their body size and large compared to all other bear species, makes them formidable opponents. To compensate even more, these little bears are extremely aggressive. They come off, at least to me, like the bear equivalent of honey badgers. Despite the bizarre nature of the sloth bears and the slightly more subdued and cryptic nature of the sun bears, they cannot contend with the sounds of the brown bears. This is mostly due to how much more common the brown bear is and how many more people are familiar with it. The brown bear, Ursus arctos, is found in northern North America and throughout Eurasia. The subspecies known as the grizzly bear, Ursus arctos horribilis, used to range across North America, from Alaska to parts of Mexico, but are now restricted to northern North America. They largely make the same sounds as the American black bear, but their roars are famous for being some of the most outwardly blood-curdling and brick-shittingly scary. As such, it too has been co-opted in the movies for the roars of countless monstrous animals, monsters, aliens, and more. Number 1 To those who like Rugrats, there is nothing quite so joyous as the laughter of children. As such, when humans find an animal that unintentionally mimics these sounds, kind of freak the hell out. Call it the uncanny valley effect as much as you want, but it will always freak someone out for some reason. I mean, I thought mimicry was the sincerest form of flattery. Can't win them all, I guess. One of the most well-known human sound copycats is the spotted hyena, Crocutta crocutta. The spotted hyena has an extensive vocal range with sounds ranging from whoops, fast whoops, grunts, groans, lows, giggles, yells, growls, soft grunt laughs, loud grunt laughs, whines, and soft squeals. The loud hoo-oop call, along with the maniacal laughter, are among the most recognizable sounds of Africa. Typically, very high-pitched calls indicate fear or submission, while loud, lower-pitched calls express aggression. The pitch of the laugh indicates the hyena's age, while variations in the frequency of notes used when hyenas make noises convey information about the animal's social rank. Though the cackling of the spotted hyena can convey happiness or contentedness, you will often hear these types of calls when they are surrounding their prey or consuming it, dead or alive. 
As such, it has become attached to death and dismemberment, at least for myself and anyone familiar with their activities. Though they are disarmingly cute in captivity, both as babies and adults, they carry around some of the strongest set of chompers among mammal predators, and the muscles needed to smash those chompers through flesh and bone alike. An eerie, creepy laugh, often echoed throughout a pack of hyenas, is, for many, the creepiest sound one might hear in nature. This is why it has made number one on this list. What makes something scary is entirely subjective and almost always context specific. Some folks may be more frightened of spiders than any of the sounds on this list, while others, like biology nerds, might find none of them scary due to learning about these animals. Let me know about other nature sounds that frighten you to your core, and another list may be forthcoming. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Arda, Bayer, Biotiverse, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Isaiah Garza, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, The Dogman, 